You're listening to The Dental Guys, special episode, charting a path forward to the future with Kevin Quishan of K-Squared Consulting. When we first planned this episode with Kevin, the idea was to talk about how to respond, react, and recover from this crazy time. But within just the first couple of minutes of this interview, we knew we were going in a very different and very necessary direction. How does the abundance and scarcity mindset affect your ability to respond to everyday problems and to crisis situations like we have today. We discussed that and so much more. This is an episode that will help to quiet your fears and get you ready for what's to come next. Don't miss this episode of The Dental Guys. Looking for a lab that understands the bridge between art and science? Check out the Dental Crafters Network. Dental Crafters, one relationship, infinite possibilities. Contact them at 1-800-472-8302 or at dentalcrafters.net. Do you want to learn to predictably place and restore dental implants using the most modern science and technology? We are talking 60 hours of CE in a comprehensive curriculum and live surgical implant placement on pre-selected patients. Head over to restorativedrivenimplants.com to learn more today. And welcome to this special episode of The Dental Guys. I'm Wes, The Dental Guy. And I'm John, The Dental Guy. And uh, Wes, I feel like we have had more, we've been working actually pretty hard. And I don't, I know everybody out there is like, yeah, right, jokers, you know. I've really and, stepped up my exercise but routine it's been a, because of this. Well, because- I didn't mean... S- so much that, but yeah, I mean, that's actually true. I've had been able to work out more than I ever have in my mm-hmm. life, which has been great actually. But, the, but you've the, been doing some stuff though, that is not your typical work. I mean, when we talk about work, you know, we've been doing the podcasting of course and, and talking with people, which has been awesome, mm-hmm. but we've really been trying to do things that allow us to not focus on negativity right? Mm-hmm. Do things that make us happy, do things that mm-hmm. kind of distract us, give us simple problems that we can solve. And I talked about earlier today, I was out backpacking, which is my happy place, but mm-hmm. your happy place or one of your happy places, it's, it's at the beehive, right? Yeah. It's actually at the apiary, John. Let me correct you. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I love these discussions. Apis. I learned something every Apis. Time. Apis is Latin for bee, right? So I didn't know apiary. that. I didn't know that until I became a beekeeper, right? I was like, "How what big is this apiary? How big you know? is your apiary?" That sounds like well, a, I have something multiple I ask apiaries, you. John. <laughs> I have multiple. I have one on my home property, and I have one on my property uh, down the road. Okay, <laughs> about five so is miles the one down the, the road not on your property? You're saying you have an illegal apiary, like a no? Dispensary? I have a friend. I have a friend that allows me to put bees on their property. It's on a farm. Okay. And it's good to have a, a place where you can actually like take bees to, right? Especially during this time of year, you're doing a lot of bee work, right? And what's bee work? And what is bee? Yeah. What's bee work? <laughs> well, I gotta know. Everyone well, out know, there is wanting to know. Bee, <laughs> bees are, are, this time of year are very busy. <laughs> um, <laughs> you this- just can't make this up, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, All right. Man. You see, but th- this is what it's Continue. about. It's about bringing positivity, right? And right. you guys right. know that I'm a beekeeper. I've been a beekeeper yes. for about six years. My wife and I got into beekeeping um, because one, it's a healthy thing. Uh, for you to be around pollen and those type of things. And it helps with allergy. Mm-hmm. I don't eat a lot of honey, but we do sell the honey and, um, it's, it's excellent, um, for those that want to tackle some allergies and those type of things. But the main reason we got into it is because we do garden, we do have vegetable gardens, those type things. And it really does help your vegetable gardens. And then, you know, it's just bloomed into this nice little hobby that we do during the spring, summer, and some cleanup in the fall. And it is a little bit of work. I mean, especially this year, I've set myself up um, to be a master beekeeper um, <laughs> because I'm just oh, man. taking time off work, man. I'm just taking time off work. So right. this, I've this, enjoyed. This whole thing's been good for you. Yeah, it's it been has, good for you. It, it's, been, it's been excellent. So let's cool. talk a little bit. Let me, let me actually, John, I'm going to take you into the oh. ape area right now. Here we go. So this was, the, this was Saturday. 
And that's me with the smoker right there. And what smoke does, and I'm going to spend a lot of time on this because we want to get to our special guest talking about moving into the future. But this is cool stuff right there. That's a feeder. And in the in the springtime, before nectar flow gets going on, you have to feed them sugar water. And they had emptied that. Man, but look at how many bees are down in there, right? And these bees have been overwintered. There's a 2019 queen in there. And so what I'm doing is I'm looking to, for the queen. And my wife there, she's in her suit. And um, I only got one sting and I worked in like nine hives. And you will get stung as a beekeeper, but I'm in a full suit. When you're working in them all day and you're really moving a lot of bees, you don't want to deal with stings. So I have a full suit on. You definitely, as a dentist, do not want to get stung in the eyes because you could lose your eyesight. So when you see people putting all these bee beards on and all that kind of stuff, and like you see people with exposed skin, that's stupid uh, because one sting in the eye, could you could lose it. So what my wife did is she just uh, opened up the box there and she's going to pull out a frame of bees. Now there's no honey per se um, in the hives right now. It's all nectar. Um, and you can see it's kind of stuck in there. Propolis is what bee glue is. And it's actually in some natural toothpaste as well. But this is a frame of bees. Uh, there's some baby bees on this frame. And what we're doing is we're looking for the queen. And the reason why we want to get the queen is because she's very valuable. And uh, uh, there's only one queen and there's probably 50 to 60,000 bees in this hive. And so we went through this hive. And in fact, on this next frame, the, the queen was right there. It was like a, it was a blessing in disguise because I didn't have to search very far, which is really cool because you don't have to go very deep in the hive to actually find the one bee that matters. And that's the queen bee. So uh, I crack this one open right here and you see it's very quickly here and then we'll move on. So I'm going to look at this side. There's a lot of brood on there, brood or baby bees. Um, and uh, bees are female for the most part. There are drones in the springtime. Those are male. And then right here, so you see my wife's finger, she sees the queen. So she's going to reach down in there. It's hard on this small screen for me to see it, but she's got a queen cage and she's going to cage that queen, which will hold the queen in. And then we can actually pull her to the side so that she's not harmed and we'll reincorporate her into another hive. So we're going to do a hive inspection. So you know that is next level man i mean we talk about next level that you just next leveled apiaries right there for me i i well, it's a lot I mean, of fun, a video man. of it and everything it looks like well, here's but the reason the reason you know, we have answer, this wait, time wait just a minute though the reason okay, why i videoed okay. it the reason why i videoed it because in the coronavirus world when you're a bee mentor to someone else how do you teach them how to beekeep so i videoed video. splitting so you're a bee beehive. mentor I'm a bee mentor. Okay. Well, Dude. you heard it here first. Wes, not only a beekeeper, not only has multiple apiaries, but is a bee mentor. So if, if you, you got need some questions. bee mentorship, speaking of mentorship, how do we how do we segue out of bee mentorship? It's, well, here's how we're going to do it. Yeah. Because mentorship totally. is mentor. And you know what? Actually, it is a pretty easy segue because what's changed over the last three weeks is that we've gone from person to person sitting in the same room, having discussions to what we've been doing for the last couple of weeks, which is coming to you um, as close as we can, which is the screen. That's what a lot of us are learning from and talking through right now. And so we're trying to find the smartest people, the most inspired people, the people that think differently sometimes about things than even what we can, because they have different ways of looking at, at things. And we've brought a lot of those people to you. But today we've got one of our favorites, We've got yep. one of our favorites because, you know, Kevin Quishan, we've been uh, connected with him now for a while, and and we're really excited to have him on to talk about where we go from here. I mean, Kevin, I don't know how you're going to follow the Beam mentorship. <laughs> you, that's a tall <laughs> order, man. I'm not. I'm not <laughs> He's been waiting to. I'm time. done. It was painful. <laughs> was that painful or what, man? <laughs> no, but it was awesome. I was, I don't know. You guys can see me on the screen before that. I don't know if you could. And I was no, like no. leaning forward. Oh, I was I was like wanting to see the queen. I was totally into it. I was uh, I learned I learned a lot, and I learned that you might be on the edge of being an illegal um, mentor with multiple apiaries. Multiple mm. apiaries, like isn't that like polygamy or po something along those lines? So, Kevin, uh, well, I mean, yeah. what are you doing? What are you doing to pass the time? Let's talk about. Do you have any weird <laughs> hobbies? 
<laughs> not like that. Oh man! Oh man! Well, Kevin, welcome back to the show. Oh, yeah, I, thank this you. is this is such a such a time, and and you know this, the fact we have this time, it's really it's yeah. getting us into places sometimes that can be really positive. I think, and and we can try to yeah. enjoy you know some of these distractions, but. There's also a lot of negativity going around right now. There's a lot of people that are super worried and concerned, and I'm sure you're talking to these people uh, throughout mm-hmm. the day multiple times. And what I mean, what are what are you hearing, and what are some of the things that you're kind of counseling people as far as you know what to do, what not to do during this time? Well, Kevin, first of all, who are you? Right to the oh, to that's the right. People. For those who right. have not met Kevin, <laughs> John, you just cut right to it, man. I love you. I like so because that most people know Kevin. They've seen him a couple yeah. times on the show. John, but yeah, John, Kevin, talk about what you do. down. Man. It's okay. Yeah. Tell I us got what excited you do, man. about the apiaries. <laughs> I have told you. Me too. I think we're done talking about dentistry. I think we just stick with the apiary and call it good. Awesome. Uh, that is awesome. Kevin, tell us what you awesome. tell, Kevin. Tell us what yeah. you do. Oh, as in, oh, you really want me to? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, you know, on a day to day basis, I, um, of course, as you guys both know, I'm a dentist and got into education early on and, and, you know, I had private practice for years. And as I got into education, um, more and more, I started, um, it just evolved into giving back a little bit more. And um, so as it's evolved, what I do now, the short answer is I work with dentists and dental teams on a daily basis to help create an environment that is filled with love and filled with joy and and part of uh, so everybody feels part of a community that's predictable and uh, very health centered helping each other be healthy as a community and thereby leading by example to help our patients be healthy and that is mm. uh, that's in, in broadest terms mm. that is what i do every day right now it feels great mm. well th- this is so one of these you- Go ahead, Wes. Go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, in this situation, your yeah. your advice is some of the most sought after advice right now because of your mm-hmm. interaction as you go into offices or are helping people through a time like this. You know mm-hmm. what? What's your general vibe on on mm-hmm. the <clears throat> on the offices that you're working with currently? Well. Uh, Two things. One is, is I, I try really hard not to be an advice giver, believe it or not. I, mm. I come from my <clears throat> mentors um, have always been great facilitators. So as opposed to let me give you advice and tell you what I think you should be doing. Um, I look at every day as a helping you come up with a plan that feels good for you individually so that you embrace it. That's what facilitating really is, right? Helping, helping mm. you decide what is in your best interest and what is your next best step and how do you want to feel and not me telling you I, my advice is you feel great you take out all the loans you put your team on unemployment and you work on your systems no that's that would be advice but if i said that um that wouldn't it, it's different from helping you see what maybe what you could um be doing and what makes most sense for you hmm so what are some of the questions that you ask, I guess? Maybe that's a, a good way to start is what what are some of the questions you ask a dentist or a team uh, to help them clarify which route they should take during time like this? I'll always start broad, start global. Um, what is it that you're feeling right now? What is it that you know right now? What is it that you think you know right now that you would like to know more about? Um you know, it like, it like draw it in, you know, what, what, what is it? How are you feeling? What, what is it that you've heard out there that you feel like, you know, to be true? What is it that you, you, from the deepest part of you that you really know to be true? And what is it that you're questioning right now? And what, what is your sense of a direction you want to move towards right now? And what might be holding you back? Um, what things do you think are holding you back from that? So <laughs> these are the, and then, and then start to move towards what we're moving towards. Hmm. I don't know if what do you think are some of the biggest fears <clears throat> that people that people are expressing to you these days? Well, I mean, the obvious, the, the fear is, am I going to use up all of my money? Um, are my patients going to come back? Are they going to want dentistry when they come back? 
Um, will they be able to afford dentistry when they come back? Even if they can't afford it, will they spend the money because they're going to be living in scarcity when we come back? Um, will my team find another job while we're gone right now? Will I be able to hire them back when we come back? Will I be able to have everybody when we come back? We don't even know what our capacity. So you see that this just this anxiety of of the unknown and, and wanting to know that. So, I mean, as, as we've probably everybody on this podcast right now, including you guys, even when you try and stay positive and you believe it's positive, you know, those thoughts come run through your brain at some point mm. in time. It's what you do with them. That is the game changer, right? Mm -hmm. Man, mm -hmm. there's so many things I think that are running through our heads right now. You mentioned 90% that have ran through my brain. And, you know, where you go with that is exactly what you're trying to help people with is that you are assessing where they're at right now. And I guess, you know, what I'd like to know is what do you feel like that the number one, like, not even like issue that we're dealing with is, is it? do you think that we're dealing with unknowns at this point? Is that the number one thing? Like everybody just says, Hey, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And then what would you say to help them to facilitate maybe a calm, right? Or a peace? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A, a, a somewhat of a keeping it real. I was having a conversation this morning um, with a, a, a client actually talking mm -hmm. about how is it that we uh, that we can how can we find some hope that makes sense with being pollyanna-ish or um, without feeling naive like what really does make sense as a human being well you know i not to get political i don't have tons of faith in our government on a regular basis but but not a lot of people do however what i see is people coming together to knowing that this is going to be really different, really crazy times. So having faith that that we all, whether it be private sector or or federal, that we're going to come together and make it work. And I do have some. It's not blind faith. It's educated faith because I see what's going on. Mm -hmm. It's not totally naive. Um, but but saying, what, what do we really think is going to happen based on what we've seen so far? Well, we are going to come back to work. You know, right. we are. We're going to see patients again. And and banks, the private sector, the banks want you. They don't want to say, oh, you and your loan. No, sorry. Go find another bank. They want your business. They're going to find ways to help us be able to pay our bills and make money. It might be it might be more than three months of not paying your your practice mortgage or your or your bis or your um, property mortgage right it might be up to six months and let's talk about that what are the odds and what have you done to move in that direction have you checked in with your bank on that so trying to find some sometimes it's these little things of let's take a couple of steps today to get some information to help you feel better and then maybe yeah, so make um maybe make some projections the other thing that that helps people is you know, um, Susan Jeffers, feel the fear and do it anyway. Old, old book that I think about all the time. It's like, but let's keep it real. If we go down the path of now this, then this, then this, is it real that your patients aren't going to come back? No, they're coming back. So let's go worst case scenario and say it's three months, mm -hmm. half your patients come back and three of your team members come back. Great. Let's, let's work up a scenario based on who, what your practice was, how much dentistry were you doing? What were you paying your team? What if we go two months without paying the rent and your mortgage? What money did you bring in? Is that enough? How many team members do you need? So sort of coming up with some realistic, real life projections help help dentists go, oh, so it sucks, but you know, not as bad as I thought. You know, now I can see it. I can feel it. I think that was my worst case yeah. scenario and I can still get through it. And it's probably not even going to be mm -hmm. that bad. So let's dial it back a little bit. So... That was a long answer. You mentioned, a lot you of, no, it's good. <clears throat> you good mentioned stuff. the word scarcity. And I want to mm. define that a little bit because I feel like that is <clears throat> maybe the root of a lot of the problems that we see. And, mm -hmm. and I mean that in so many arenas. You know, we mm -hmm. have been, and there's value in the idea of scarcity. It's a marketing tool, 
for sure. Oh, yeah. Uh, there's ways that it can be used to encourage people to do things or motivate people to do things, but it can also be the cause of a lot of fear. And it seems like it's driving much of what we're seeing. You know, talk about scarcity a little bit and what does what does that mean? What does that mindset look like? And you know, what what should we do about that? You know, how how do we how do we sort of combat that in our in our in our minds and our practices and our mindsets? Mm. Well, when you talk about scarcity, that's a great question. Um, when you talk about sc- scarcity, you have to look at the other side, which is abundance, right? So with scarcity, we think about, well, how do you, when we say the word scarcity, not enough or not knowing what enough is, if we put ourselves in that spot and say, "Mm, if I don't know what enough is, or I really don't have enough, how does it feel? And then of course we go into the whole sympathetic tone and lots of cortisol and the way we lead and our actions and the way we are perceived in that scarcity. And how does that feel? How does that look to you? When you see yourself in scarcity, it doesn't look great. But if we live in abundance, which abundance is at least knowing how much money we need, how many new patients are enough, how much time we need. And then we go, well, I know what that is. And there are patients out there and their money is going to come in again. And how do I look when I live in a world of abundance? How do I see myself? Well, I see myself as a more calm leader tapping into the parasympathetic tone. I see myself making decisions that are more thought out as opposed to uh, um, reactive and spastic. And, and how do I look to myself? And I like the way that looks. And so for me, one of the tools is, is, is your scarcity and all the things that we see with scarcity and, and tap into that. How do you, how do you lead? Um, how do you act? And how do you feel? And then hmm. when we think of abundance, how do you lead, how do you act, and how do you feel? And which one, when we come out of this, do you want to look back at and go, that's what I tapped into more of? Man, right? that is so powerful. I mean, I think that's all we have to do is go into the grocery store, right? And we see mm. the power of the scarcity mindset. You know, the, the real, we're so far removed from reality when we're in there. You know, there's, there's no shortage of things, you know, there's no shortage of of food or toilet paper or whatever you want to talk about. And yet, uh, we're really wired to, for some reason, um, fall into that. It's very easy to fall into that, um, to be motivated by that idea of, well, if, if someone else is worried about this and that and this, and there's not enough of this and that I should be too. And, uh, that can push us to do things. As you said, I think a good game plan is find out rather than stick your head in the sand, you know, try to regain control of the situation, yeah. figure out what yeah. you as do. Much as you can. <clears throat> right. Realize what is enough. Mm-hmm. And I remember yeah. that being a, a big part of some of the education we've had, you know, where you've been involved in the past has just been the idea of make sure you understand what's enough. And yeah. uh, a lot of times what is enough is a lot less than what I think uh, society tells us it needs to be. I think a lot of yeah, people. How much money do we all really need to live off of? Right. Yeah, go ahead. Mm. I was going to say the same thing is like a lot of us are going to come out of this with a, we're going to dial it back quite a bit because we've had a time to reflect and even self evaluate um, what we were doing was too abundant, right? Or for yourself, you have to look at those things and internalize, and everybody's having this. Well, you almost have to internalize everything now because you've been forced to. So in a sense, it's like a gut check, right? Let's Mm -hmm. gut check everybody at the same time. And, you know, I want you to speak to to some of this. And as we see my daughter kind of speaking into the back. (laughs) Uh, So what are some things that we should not be doing during this time? What are some things maybe we should be focusing on? I think you've spoke mm-hmm. to some of that already, but specifically, and I know that could be each individual person is different, right? But I think mm-hmm. there's some core concepts in what you said there, mm-hmm. what not to do and what to do during the downtime that we have away from mm-hmm. this clinical, um, right? Well, that's what we do. It's like yeah. we are in the, in the mouth, we work and we do things yeah. and we create things. So what are some things that we should not be doing during this time? And maybe what we should be focusing on. 
Well, yeah, not to, I, it's a great question. Not to really focus on the negative, what should we not be doing? But in the, in the grander scheme of things, I, you know, my, my personal opinion is what we should not be doing. We should be taking advantage of the situation for what makes sense because we're silly not to, but we shouldn't be taking advantage of people or the situation for the dark side. Um, I feel like we are, you know, like, oh, well, while everybody's home and we're doing this, let's advertise this or let's say, oh, well, you, you know, you need a bunch of this right now. So let me tell you why you should be working with me or with that company right now. Like, let's not take advantage of the situation. Say this was such an, a missed opportunity. Let's take advantage of the situation and do what we want others to do. So so what not to do for me is 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 to give in to the dark side, if you will, and take advantage of this whole terrible pandemic, this crisis, to take advantage of people. Because I mm -hmm. see a lot of that, and it, 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 it rubs me the wrong way. So, um, so that's what we should not be doing, for sure. Um, and so conversely, what we should be doing is, is everybody give a, a little bit. You know, mm -hmm. what, um, there's several companies that I, I know about that, like the um, the executives are taking a 25% pay cut across the board and people yeah. are job sharing so that instead of five days a week, they're two and a half, but they got to keep their jobs, you know, so everybody's mm -hmm. sort of sharing the burden a little bit, but it helps create a sense of community yeah, and, awesome. and togetherness in it. And that's what we should be doing is creating community and sharing um, things together to make us feel better. So, um, but, you know, that's the only yeah. real not to do is for me is it's the don't take advantage of people when because right now you have so many people have this opportunity to really take advantage of people i think yeah yeah and i think that's been kind of the whole focus of um of our podcast you know we were talking about this so interesting you bring us up because just the other day um i try to keep try to like yeah, keep this as general as possible but there's there's so much out there, uh, like you say, where people are kind of using this opportunity. You know, it's, it, I guess what it boils down to is when you give people a lot of time mm. and you give people some stress and mm. you give people the ability to respond to that stress, um, there are things that come out that are mm -hmm. sometimes really awesome and sometimes, you know, really inspiring, but there are also sometimes the the worst sides uh, of things mm -hmm. and 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 that's not to judge per se because we're all under stress and there are things that we don't even yeah. know about going on in people's <clears throat> lives you know that you can't really judge from the outside but we certainly can judge yeah. the outcome of some of those things you know and we can say this is not yeah. a good outcome and this is not a and and yeah. it seems like the uh our world and dentistry and i think this is a lot of cottage industry type of worlds are this way that, you know, we're pretty tightly wound. And when you start to see uh, the wheels come off in certain ways, or the at least the perception of that, mm -hmm. it really pushes people to um, compromise in ways that that we shouldn't. So our podcast, we've always tried to kind of stay away from that side of things and just say, hey, let's, let's talk about how we can, you know, create something that's better, that is the next level that's, you know, moving people toward, because in the end, we look at right. this as an opportunity, really, truly. I mean, that sounds like such a easy thing to say or whatever, but I mean, you think about, it let's is. talk about that. Let's talk about some of the opportunities that mm -hmm. this situation creates for our practices and how mm -hmm. can we come through this as a stronger team in our offices, mm -hmm. um, as a more educated team, and also you know, how can we inspire our, our patients? You know, what are some of the things if you're that you're maybe talking about, or some of the uh, uh, the ideas that you've seen around that are maybe helping to guide people through thinking through this at least for what works in, mm -hmm. in their office? You know, kind of talk through that with us a little bit. Yeah, yeah, that's a great question. I'm sort of living it real time. Um, I try, I try and be very congruent, right? Like do what I'm asking other people to do. And one of the things right now is in this time, we have, there's a lot of talk about looking at the world differently and, and systems changing and our structure changing when we come back and being a different type of a leader. 
And also having more compassion for others is what we're learning and compassion for ourselves. Well, one of the things that I've been working on a lot of with my friends and mentors for a while is a different type of a leadership. I mean, it's sort of, it's not new, but it might be newer in dentistry and healthcare and this some uh, corporations. But um, like the other day, I was on a, a team call that I'm sure we'll talk about in a minute. Um, it was a practice I was supposed to be in, travel to. And instead of traveling there, we broke it up into three, two and a half hour segments over three days. I'm doing that with a lot of people right now, several. Anyway, on one of them that I was with the other morning, I think it was our fourth call. Yeah, so we added one. It was a fourth. And we always do, you know, check-ins and and try and, you know, um, some grounding, if you will, before we have our meetings. And, and that could be a, you know, oftentimes it's think of a word that describes how you've been the past week and a sentence that helps everybody understand where that comes from. And then a word that describes how you're feeling right now as we start this meeting. And one sentence that helps everybody understand where you're coming from so that we can all understand where we're coming from and start to create the vulnerability-based trust with each other. Well, so I've been doing that for a while, so then I'll get to the point of the story. So um, on the fourth call, I thought, you know what, Kevin, lead by example, be congruent. You know that things are changing. You know things are evolving. Be part of that. So as we're all, there are nine of us on a Zoom call. So you're seeing everybody on a screen. And um, I, even with it, I started the first couple minutes with a grounding um, meditation. They didn't see it coming, <laughs> you know, um, but, but we all, you know, we were all in different places, everybody in their house. And I said, if you want to sit or you want to um, cross your legs, whatever. And, and I just sort of led everybody through, through a nice grounding meditation. And I said, you know, if you want to close your eyes, you may. If you don't, don't. If you want to participate, do. If you don't, don't. And I sort of went through it. Of course, my eyes were closed. And it was a couple minutes. And when we finished, and, you know, and I said, take one last deep breath. And when you're ready, open your eyes. And I opened my eyes. And on the, on the Zoom, you felt this peace. You felt more calmness to start off a meeting than I have probably ever felt. And I thought to myself, why didn't I try that on earlier? And that's who we want to be right now. Is And, and that, that's what really helps is what can we do for each other is, is, is some grounding, some different grounding, some ways to come together as a community that helps us all get through this together. And so that was part of being a team that we're all in our houses with all this anxiety. A couple of people, actually one roommate had been positive for the coronavirus and a lot of anxiety. And we did a nice, nice grounding. I don't remember if that was the question. I got off off on a tangent there, but that was no. It, it was essentially yeah. How do we how do we think through, you know, with with the potential yeah. of all that negative energy going on? You know, how do we kind of yeah. just escape from that and start to kind of build on what we know, which you said at the beginning. You know, what do we know to be true? You know, and yeah. I think if we start by just calming ourselves, being able to, to, you know, be in that moment of just knowing, Hey, we're, where we are right now, you know, we're okay. Yeah. We have this community. And I think if you can extend that out to your patients mm. and have yeah. them kind of feel that along with you, mm -hmm. I know right. Wes and I, we've been trying to, you know, remain connected. And I had the coolest thing happen the other day, you know, I was meeting with my team and I had put out a couple of little videos on our, our Facebook page. And, um, one of my team members just about a day later, she just said, Hey, you know, you mentioned if there was any social media stuff we wanted to do that we could. And she had spent, I don't know how much time recording video of her putting together pictures of our team from like meetings we'd attended and some like mm -hmm. exercise sessions we'd done together at the office and stuff that, and she just sent it to me and said, Hey, if you want to use this, use it. And, you know, you put that up and you start to see these responses like, Hey, I needed that. Yeah. You know, I needed yeah. a pa patients are saying yeah. that I just, I needed that. I needed to feel a sense of normal, um, yeah. that, that the sense of community connectedness rather yeah. than, you know, seeing another news story or yeah. hearing another doom and gloom situation. And you start to remember the humanity of it, of it all here, you know, that we're not, mm -hmm. we're not, mm -hmm. we're all feeling most of the same things, you know, and that's what, 
I think yeah, of our and patients think of, think know of that. that. Man. Well, think of that, John, like we, we you and your, um, what was her name that did this, that did the Facebook stuff uh, for you? That did the you video. This was Amber was her yeah. name. Amber. What you and Amber did is not only did you help people feel a sense of normal and a sense of connectedness and a sense of fun, what you also didn't do is you didn't say, Hey, patients, while you're home, let me, let's talk about implants right now. Let's talk about when you come back, why you're going to need that <laughs> implant. You did, what you did is you just, you just created some connection and, mm. and some familiarity so good, and that is, that's what makes you different. So, yeah. mm. you know, I think, I think this is a good time mm. to talk about this because, and, I've, and I kind of wanted to talk about it last time, but it wasn't appropriate for who we were having on, but I think you'd be a good person to talk about this. My wife and I were in the car the other day and we were driving up to the office actually to get some things. And, and uh, I'm dying said, to know what this is just because your, your disclaimer makes me, uh, the intrigue. Is I know, just burning I right know. Now. We may have to end this yes. early. It's going to, Oh man, well, because I'm that guy, right? I mean, like yeah. John knows this, like yeah, I could out. pull out the next okay. thing is like right yeah. behind you that door. Know. Okay. You don't, All right. Come on. Right. You don't. All right. Punchline. Punchline. Get to it. No, this yeah. is serious. Yeah. This is serious. And I okay. think you can help. You're a driving lot of people. to the office. We're driving to the office and my wife, you know, we're, I'm 42. She just turned 40. And, you know, she's like, do you remember the time that you heard that dentist had the highest suicide rate? And I was like, yeah, I was like, I wonder what that is now. And it actually, dentists don't have the highest suicide rate. According to the CDC, we're not even in the top 10 any longer, but uh, it's construction workers, I think, are the, the highest suicide rate. But we know that this is a time, Kevin, where uh, people are actually just getting out of dentistry. We know that because John and I saw practices go up for sale within the first couple of mm -hmm. weeks. We know people... You know, I know a person that manages lots of financial things and his, one of his longstanding partners just said, I'm done. You know, he's like, mm -hmm. I'm ready to get out. Right. Mm -hmm. But then the worst mm -hmm. out, right. The worst out is suicide. Mm -hmm. And, and I would hate for someone that's listening to this right now, not to reach out if you're thinking about it, you know, please talk to someone. Kevin, talk a little bit about that because I'm concerned a little bit mm. about, about that. John, <laughs> wow. are you concerned? Well, our profession is certainly, I mean, we're teetering a little bit in some situations and people are feeling like we talk about all this negativity that's swirling around. I mean, you know, this, this is the time to certainly address those things. I mean, we had a patient in our practice, you know, who just was a physician and he was, you know, he's in the ICU on a ventilator right now. And, and, you know, you start to, have that fear combined with the financial stresses and, you know, people are, people are struggling. I mean, Kevin, what, what do you, what do you think about like mental health during this time is, mm. is it, it's definitely got to be a focus that we have to have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, the, uh, is, so thank you for asking that and feeling like this is the place to ask it. I it's years ago, I made a pact to myself that anytime I'm with a group of dentists or teams to talk about mental health and try and get rid of the stigma around anxiety and depression. Um, I, as you guys both know, if we were to pull all the dentists in the world, you would find that there's a certain personality type of DNA, call it what you want, that, that, that um, is alluring for people to go into dentistry. And those are people who are high achievers, who have high anxiety, um, who are um, perfectionistic in nature, and therefore there is a lot of anxiety and depression in dentistry. And then, of course, couple again, as you guys know, that we we think that certain person when they were younger, experiencing a dentist, experienced this quiet room where you were the boss. And it seemed to be a little you had some respect and the patient couldn't talk back. And that was all we saw until we got into dentistry and realized that there were people to manage and schedules to manage and bills to pay and things that change. And you are on stage all day long for, I don't think we should be on stage, but just to keep that term going on stage all day long. And it was not what you wanted. And it's hard to be perfect at all those. And then, you know, we're in this tiny little place where the 
patient's not a sitting in this place of spit where we're supposed to be within microns. And that is the perfect, um, you know, perfect storm for people with already with anxiety to get much worse and depression. Now this into it, and we are, it is a, um, it's, it's a fire ready to just explode. And, and, and so just talking about, it, that's why I was so glad you brought it up because so many of us don't talk about the anxiety we feel. So many of us don't talk about that. Yeah, I feel I'm not, I don't know if I'm clinically depressed or if I'd be diagnosed with depression, but I feel depressed on a regular basis. I get a little down. Well, okay, then that is what it is. I don't care if you're if you're diagnosed with clinical depression and taking a medication, whether you are or not. I don't give a crap. I give a crap that we talk about our anxieties, that we talk about that we go through times of depression, that we talk about how it affects our lives, and and that we need to talk about it more and more. And, um, and I think we all probably have, when we look at it, a personal story of a probably a dentist friend who is has some high anxiety who deals with depression on a regular basis. And we just want them to know that they're, that there's hope and that they're not alone. And that goes back to what we started this conversation with. How do we, how do we give each other hope to see on the other side and know that it's going to be okay, but not just Pollyanna ish. Oh, don't worry. It's going to be okay. How do we help them visualize what that's going to feel like, what it's going to mm. look like and the steps we can take to start moving in that direction. And that is how we overcome that a little bit. Um, Yeah. uh, That's such a good word, man. Mm. Yeah. Kimberly, my uh, girlfriend, I mean, we've lived together for years, but we're not married um, because my wife won't allow it, but that's a whole different story. But anyway, um, um, (laughs) she, uh, for years um, off and on, she worked for the crisis text line and because she wanted, to give back because she, you know, she, we all deal with a little anxiety and have a history of some depression and, and just being human beings. And some of the stories I hear when she donated her time, she went through all this training to be a volunteer on the um, crisis text line. And, you know, she was exhausted at the end of them, but she felt this reward yet. She saw what people were dealing with. And we were just talking about that the other day, um, as far as, you know, how, how that's going right now. And um, although we don't talk about it on the news a lot, you know, is the suicide rate up right now? You won't hear about it, um, you know, but people are deeply depressed and anxious right now. And um, so we, it's, it's a matter yeah. of helping them feel connected. And like we said a couple of minutes ago, grounding, just some, some catching your breath, mm-hmm. tapping back into the parasympathetic tone, um, getting that adrenaline down. And uh, it's just, it's, it's amazing what it can do to help all of us, because we all deal with some anxiety yeah. and depression. You may not know that you do, but I promise you, you do. Well, and this whole scarcity abundance mindset is really comes right back to this core part of what we're talking about here of knowing, being thankful, first off, for just what you have right now, realizing that, you know, we are going to be okay. That doesn't mean we, like you say, don't still come up with a plan and we still need to, you know, be proactive and we need to move and we need to make decisions where appropriate, but always with the mindset that we have a lot more than what we sometimes feel we do uh, when we're in the midst of those times of feeling, you know, that we don't know what, what to do. And part of it is as dentists, as well, as you identified, we're used to being uh, able to react to, uh, situations almost instantly making decisions, kind of being in charge sort of of our environment, or at least having the perception that we're in, in control of our environment. Uh, and now we've lost that sense of control. And that certainly triggers a lot of those feelings. And, um, you know, I think in the midst of all of the, you know, I mean, I don't know how many phone calls I've had to make or emails or text messages back and forth between, you know, people that I, uh, rely upon to help me make decisions and, you know, all the more feeling less and less in control. Um, Mm -hmm. sometimes it is, that's, you know, we were talking about this earlier today, you know, I just had to get out for a couple of days and go backpacking up and get away, you know, and just be able to have that. Remember the simple things, all we need to worry about right now is building a fire. 
You know, that's all we got to worry about. Yeah. And then yeah. we can accomplish that, you know, and sometimes there's a place for that. And I think our, our teams need that kind of same leadership, as you said, mm-hmm. having a way of feeling that connectedness and that calm. Um, mm-hmm. And that's interesting to me that I feel like, I feel like uh, whenever we talk to, to Kevin West, we there's like our, our, t- our tone drops down, like everything just kind of just gets a little lower in a very positive <laughs> way. Like it's it just a... It's like we're we're all kind of just coming to that point of just really getting a little bit more real about things, and I really uh, I really like that, Kevin. I think that's a very it's a good uh, good place to be that we need to be uh, more uh, frequently, uh, and I and I think that's that's uh, when when it comes to, you know, how do people start um, thinking about recovery and coming back and thinking about as our practices mm-hmm. will kind of build back mm-hmm. into the time um, we're faced with some of these discussions about um, how do we handle the challenges that we are going to have, which can be kind of exciting things, not, not all bad, but, you know, I think there's a lot of opportunity for innovation and for mm-hmm. thinking differently about our schedules, thinking differently about how we take care of our patients, you know, what are some of the ideas that you're either hearing about or, or helping people to explore that are maybe, you know, you're, you're talking more with your clients, uh, when it comes to recovering and getting back into our, our routines. Yeah. Yeah. That goes back to the earlier question, which is what makes sense for each doctor, right? So mm-hmm. this morning when I was on a call, it was, it was, you know, again, it was when we come back, what is it that you're going to look back upon and say, I'm glad I did that. And one of the options was, I'm glad I did not work on the practice the entire time. We had to leave that option. Are you going to look back and say, I'm glad anything? Or are you going to look back and say, I'm really glad that um, I got really, if today it was, you know what, I'm going to be, I'm going to start to become a master at EagleSoft while I've got this time. That was one of, one of his today. <clears throat> and um, I'm going to dial, I'm going to sit and I'm going to really just dial in the optimal flow for bringing airway into the practice. Um, those were some of his today, but, but it, it is um, one of, one of them was, I'm going to really become more of a master of QuickBooks during this downtime. Um there's, I mean, there's so many, you know, what, what, what do you want to look back on and say, one of them was, you know, really start to get better templates for, um, for the chart notes. I mean, it can be little things like that, or it can be big, grandiose things like looking at what is your optimal new patient flow look like? You've got some time. If you had to create optimal, what does that look like for you so that you can share your vision of it, not what you're going to do? but your vision of it with your team and have them give you some reflections and add to it. You can say, you know what, while we were down, I put some thought into this, you know, I thought, you know, this is what I'm thinking about. Now, what do you guys think? And that's what I did during the downtime. But maybe for some, mm-hmm. it was, you know what, during the downtime, I knew it was in my, my best interest was to um, help distance school, my kids to go backpacking, to take some self-reflection time and to get good at meditating. In fact, I missed all you guys while we were gone but I didn't think a lot about you. But then you're also mm. leading by example, right? You're, you're leading by example saying that's what was in my best interest for my personal health while we were down. Hmm. So it's different you know, for that, everybody. And that was one thing that my wife kind of called me on <clears throat> and she said, you know, don't take what you've been <clears throat> doing and replace it with something else just to busy yourself. No. And she's like, no. that's what I see you falling into here. And she said, I mm-hmm. want you to think about this as an opportunity. And you've been ramping up over the last 18 to 24 months and incorporating, advancing and all those things. And you've been given this as a gift, she said. Yeah. And yeah. a gift is something you cherish. And so if we look at that as an opportunity to uh, to spend more time with whatever mental health checks and personal mm-hmm. development to reacquaint yourself with your children, your wife, wh- whoever that is, right? Whoever that is or right. whatever that is, right? That mm-hmm. you're not just replacing um, one thing with another. And I yeah. think it's so, we're, so we're, important. We're, kind of, we're prone to that coping mechanisms, you know, of oh. trying to find a way to cope and that can be healthy or unhealthy. 
Uh, and I there's totally been a lot of that. that. Yeah, yeah, there has been yeah. so much of that in the in the you know in the world right now. And one a term that came up over the weekend, I think I think I'm a little was a little late getting it, but now I get it. Um, was that we are not we're not now just working from home. We're at home dealing with a crisis, trying to work. Yeah. Mm. Right. We're not, you're not every day right now. We're not, Oh, now you're working from home. No, no, no. I'm at home dealing with a pandemic and a crisis, trying to figure out how to get some work done. Right. right. With, yeah. with schooling it's my like kids, with kids from a taking, distance yeah, school and, at home. It's not the same. I mean, the kids are yeah. uh, feeling, they're feeling these things, yeah. you know, I mean, yeah. oh, and that's the sure thing like you, you're, you're so right. I mean, it's, it's so easy to say, oh, okay, kids, well, we just transitioned to school from home. But the kids, yeah. man, there's a lot going on in those in those little minds, mm -hmm. you know, that they're hearing things, they're they're seeing parts of headlines, they're hearing yeah. the news reports, and there's a lot that they're processing that is, and we are as well, that's competing totally. with what we kind of say we're trying to do. Um, what are what are some of the things? What are some of the characteristics of a practice that will be successful? coming out of this like what are some some you know <laughs> some thoughts some words some characteristics i mean when you think about um going forward and how things are going to change especially initially you know what are some of the things that you would would be emphasizing or focused on with uh how to how to structure your your even just your thought processes the way you handle your team the way you handle your patients mm -hmm. Great question. I think part of that is go go really big. The biggest part is being a congruent um, leader. Think about how you want to lead. When you look at yourself, how do you want to be perceived? Like we were talking earlier, the difference between scarcity and abundance. Well, if I come back from this and I'm the same leader that I was before the break, um, I, I would I would be disappointed in myself. I should say I wouldn't be disappointed in either of you. Um, but I would be disappointed in myself because if I'm going to be congruent and lead by example, I'm going to say, you know what, during this time, there was some self-reflection. I learned a little bit about myself. I learned more about who I wanted to be. I learned about things I appreciate more. And, and then you don't just talk about it with your team. You do it. You lead that way. You, you are a congruent leader. And that means you have to change. And that might be... Um, helping everybody, having a little more compassion for yourselves and other. That's maybe what you learn. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe it's, it's starting out your mornings with a, with a different type of a leadership, which is I feel like what I've learned over the break is I need some grounding. So really every morning in our morning huddle, we're adding two minutes to it because the two minutes is some intentional grounding because that is who I want to be as a leader. And that's, you know, whatever, whatever that looks like for you. But that would, that's one of the biggest oh. things, right? This um, is this is so yeah. good. Yeah. I mean, um, man, it's really like as as we're talking about this, I mean, I'm just thinking of these are some of the you're putting a lot of words to kind of thoughts that I really haven't known exactly how to express. You know, you think about mm -hmm. what what we want to leave behind even when we're all mm -hmm. said and done with this profession or our work career, whatever that means. Um, what are the things that really matter? You know, and and that is, you know, what you're talking about here. You're talking about the things that people will actually remember about you uh, in terms of how you influence their life. I mean, that's that's yeah, a heavy I think <laughs> burden. That is a good burden to kind of re recognize. We have that ability to influence yeah. others in the way they look at going mm -hmm. forward, even especially when there's this disruption. It allows you to really go, whoa, 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 like wake up here and really think about the impact you want to have. This is an opportunity. Well, if you had to, oh, sorry. I just, no, I, I got to no, go, go on that one, John, real quickly. Because if you had to pick, you don't, but if you had to pick on who you wanted to influence, have the a greater positive influence on in your time, would it be your patients or your team? <laughs> hmm. Yeah, and I mean, it, I mean it's for different. Me, I would answer. It's, it's, yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, my, for me, it's my the team. team. 
the team. Yeah. 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 And, and me too, because but it doesn't mean we don't love our patients. It means that every, it doesn't mean we come back from this. We're like, I'm a better leader. I'm going to tell you how to lead. No, actually being a better leader is I've learned that I, that I, what I've learned over this time, I already loved all of you, but my, our sense of connection and our sense of how we support each other and have each other's back is what I want more of. And I'm going to lead by example, because when I leave here, when I'm done doing dentistry or die, that's what, that is, that's what I want. That's what I, I want to know that I had such a profound, positive impact and influence on the people I was with every day. Not that I don't yep. want to impact my patients, but man, it is, it's about us. And that, and that's my hope mm. is when we come back, your question 10 minutes ago was when we come back, what's going to make us different. It's, it's big. It's broad. It is big, right? Yeah. It, it's big. It's not, it's not, Oh, we should have done no offense to my conversation. Today. It's not, I became a better, I became an expert at Excel or opened it. That's important. But what do you really yep. want to be when you come back is, is a better is, human. Is a, is a, Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 And that drives and, and lead by example. being better at everything. I mean, it, 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 once you have that mindset, it pushes you toward, cause what, you know, again, as you, as you know, Kevin, I mean, Wes and I've always had the approach of, we, we've always believed that if you do the <clears throat> right thing, if you do the right thing, you may not quote unquote win in every metric, right. But you are going to win in the metrics that matter, uh, in the long run. Yeah. You're going to, you're going to sleep better at night. You're going to feel that you've made, you know, the right positive choices and decisions and and influence people in a way that you, you, you will, that will live on past yourself. And this is really getting to the heart of that right now. And it's really, again, I keep thinking it's just such an opportunity now to do that even maybe more because of this disruption, it gets us all to stop. uh, Yeah. And and think think about Wes, going back to your question about your question about mental, mental health. Why, why, why can't we say, you know what, the other thing I reflected on during the time off is we may all feel none of us here are dealing with anxiety or depression, except I know we as we're humans and how do we bring that to our patients? How do we, and that might be something we come back with, Mm -hmm. right? We integrate more as a leader when we come back is just more and more, a little bit more of that and we'll be a better society, you know, and we'll Mm -hmm. at least have our, our, our comfort in our community. There's so many, there's so many, uh, people <clears throat> as leaders that distance themselves from their, let's call them coworkers. Right. And I like to call my, my, the people that I work with my team, you know, and, and, and I, and I was kind of, there was jest about that, uh, from a standpoint of not from my team. When I started pumping this idea of, that we're all level here. We're all in the same playing field. We're working towards a common goal and everybody's heard the acronym together. Everyone achieves more. And Mm -hmm. I can remember years ago, like when first implementing that, how that everyone gravitated towards that leadership style. They felt Mm -hmm. like they were contributing in a way. And whenever you, whenever, whenever you show up to work, whenever that is, how you respond to a crisis, trust me, whether it's you fractured a tooth when you were taking it out and it broke off at the gum line and your choice not to huff or puff or get upset mm-hmm. or change the mentality of the entire operatory just because something quote unquote bad happened, mm-hmm. you know, or it's just in how you react to a team member that's having a tough day and you're more Mm -hmm. sentimental maybe towards that. There's been such in some places, there's such a division between leadership or quote unquote leadership and the people that are behind the scenes working with you. And I, and I don't even like to say with you, I I like to say they're working alongside of me with me, moving together and, I, and I, my team member, my team members have already responded in an amazing way from the very first day in sending me text and saying they really appreciate it. And I'm not saying I figured it out because I've far from figured it out. And I, I hope that I am going to be better because of this, uh, this whole situation. I will strive to be and purpose to be. Um, but there has to be some type of leadership because I feel like people want to be led. People want to be told. Mm-hmm. 
thing. Yeah, they the people want to be, be yeah. part. People want to be part of something special, and they yes. want to be mm. inspired. That's those are the t- they. Everybody wants to be a part of something special. Everybody wants to feel a sense of community and everybody wants to work with people who inspire them. That's it. Those are the three things. Well, and it tends to also lead to success in your practice in other ways as well. Yeah. You know, if you, if you commit yourself to that way of leadership, which is really just kind of enabling other people to, you know, have, uh, take control of their world as well, you know, to help you and you help them, um, that gets reflected in success of the practice. And I mean, I'm sure you see that probably time and time again, Kevin, I mean, the way you are facilitating, um, and what you're kind of promoting, it's not maybe the typical way of approaching these types of problems, but I'm guessing that you see some pretty awesome results when you can really get somebody to, uh, figure this out or, or watch you help them to kind of figure this out. I mean, you've probably seen some interesting changes happen in practices. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And in myself, because, because we're, we're leading by example. And that is my, some of my mentors, I was on a call this morning at seven o'clock with one of my mentors and doing a we're doing sort of a future leadership thing right now which is more of a system sensing um it's a whole different whole conversation we could have but and and that is it that is who we want to be as we lead by example we're pushing ourselves as we're inspiring others we're helping helping ourselves be a helping them be a better version of themselves while we are doing it simultaneously. There's a um, radio talk show host um, that I've listened to for years here in Knoxville. You may have heard of him, John. His name's Halloran Hilton Hill. And um, he has a, just a talk show um, in the, it was in the mornings. Um, And I think that it really inspired me to, look at each day. And he says this at the beginning of his show, welcome to this brand new day. This day has never been lived before. It's a blank canvas. If you will it so, right? And he talks about, I won't read the whole thing, but he talks about basically take this opportunity at the beginning of today. And you said this, Kevin, to write down things, maybe mentally, I think it's important to write things down. And to look at the amount of things that you're grateful for, right? Look at just some positives before you get into the negatives, right? Mm -hmm. Because if you can circle back to what you're grateful for every day, man, does it ever make a difference? And that's something I'm, yeah, and I'm not, and I'm not as good at that. You know, that's something that I've, I've got to, I'm always trying to work on. I'm sitting here looking at a CD that my daughter and her choir, um, and we did a little uh, study on Sunday morning with a bunch of teenagers, middle schoolers, and some music from the choir that they had sung. And it says, I have been blessed. Mm-hmm. All right. I'll hold that back up there, Kevin. You can see that. Mm-hmm. All right. Mm-hmm. Now, mm-hmm. what, you know, why is that important? Right. Why is it important to realize that you've been blessed? Right. Mm-hmm. Because it, ref- it, it pushes away the negativity. And so when you have that moment where you recognize the blessings, the gratitude, right? Like one thing happened here. I just going to share this, going to open up a little bit about this. My wife had a a doctor's visit today and I'm not going to share what it was, but it was something that was kind of, it's tough for her, right? Mm -hmm. It's tough Mm -hmm. for every woman. Mm -hmm. And one thing that I have had trouble with is taking the moment, right? And making that the moment. Put away everything and focus, Mm -hmm. right? And my office manager that is retired now, she would always look to me and she'd say, Wes, focus. Focus on what I'm telling you, right? Do I have your attention? Or she would say, um, she would say, I don't have your attention. You're not listening to me, right? And then I would be like, okay, I've got my attention. And, and that's one thing that I want to work on is taking the moment for that purpose, purpose and that person. Mm-hmm. Living in the present, living in the present, man, mm-hmm. man, 
Well, I think that this, you know, having this discussion is um, really a breath of fresh air, Kevin. I mean, it's, 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 it's what I think we really need to be. There's so many things we can't control. Uh, but this is one thing we, we can control, you know, the way we look at things, the way we, um, think about things and, uh, you know, and the way we, and the way we choose to lead, um, through this, through this time, whether that's our at home, whether that's at, at the office. Um, so tell, uh, everybody who's listening to this or watching this a little bit about how, you know, how can they connect if they want to learn more about what you're doing and about kind of how you're helping, practices and, and dentists to, um, kind of learn more about themselves and, and create the type of environment and the type of practice that they, that they want, uh, where do they go? How do they get connected with you? Uh, you can, uh, I have, I'm sadly, social media is not my wheelhouse. So it's a, um, necessary evil for me. Um, I'm just, I'm just not good at it and I claim it. Um, but I do, uh, have an Instagram page, um, K squared facilitation. I do have a Facebook page, K squared facilitation, and I do have a website, K squared facilitation, or you can always email me at, it's pretty simple. It's just Kevin at K squared facilitation.com. And I do think it's going to, what I do now, I promise you will be different next year. I promise you it'll be different in six months um, because we are going to evolve with the times. So um, I, 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 this has helped me see a different vision of how I'm going to be contributing to dentistry as we move forward because I feel fairly certain that exactly what I do right now is going to be different three months from now um, mm. because I want to give back to dentistry in some way, shape. I want to help create community and I don't want to take advantage of the situation. I don't want to be that guy. So, um, so what it's going to look like, I, I don't know. I just know it's going to be evolving and it's going to be cool. If you're listening hmm. to this right now, you know, the dental guys have endorsed and said, we, we would endorse a product or give a thumbs up or something right now. And I think hands down, we can say that we really thumbs up to what, yeah. I mean, that's the least I could say to what right. Kevin's done for us, um, yep. you know, in our careers as, as technicians, but the conversations that we've had even just now and behind the scenes, they will live in our minds for the mm -hmm. rest of our lives. And if you're yeah. looking for, if you're looking for somebody like this, John, I think, I think this is an opportunity to reach out to someone that is going to help you. And, um, yeah, and that understands and that truly understands what you're dealing with right now. And I think that's something that, you know, is really rare. Somebody who is, you know, an accomplished clinician, clinician understands what you're doing in your practice, what your true challenges will be, and yet has the ability to kind of look outside of just that and, and ask you the question, you know, well, where do you want to be? You know, where do you want to be? And that's, that's what we all, uh, need to hear or need to, need to explore. So good. This has, um, been a great episode and, uh, we'll be releasing this, uh, on, uh, all of our regular outlets. And so if you're listening to this, uh, we appreciate you listening and on the live stream, there's been a few listeners here in this afternoon hour. It's been good to have Kevin come on our show and, and talk a little bit about these things. It's a great show. It's impacted me and I know it's impacted John. And so I'm mm -hmm. super excited about, uh, what's to come on our show from this. And, um, if you want to reach out to Kevin, you heard how to reach out there. We'll put his, uh, uh contact information in the, uh, comments section below so you could reach us out there and so um as we always say you know uh, we really the way people find out about uh this show and the dental guys is organically right you you, you hear something and you think man i got a friend that needs to hear that or man it, you know that came up the other day and you, you really just needed to get it out in a different way. And you're like, well, just share that around, right? Just share it. We, we've, we've put this in video format one uh, on YouTube and we put it on um, Apple podcast or any pod catcher per se. And so the way people find out is for you to share with a friend. And that's what it's all about. Be a mentor, right? Uh, one of the things that we're missing out on is not go going to the AO and 
and we're just going to continue to podcast and we were going to talk about at the AO was how you can be a mentor how you can use what you have to impact. And if it's shared an episode like this or something else, or maybe you sitting down having a Zoom meeting of your own and talking shop or talking about uh, team meetings and how you're going to change and how you're going to do better, well, it's time for maybe you to step up and do that. I challenge you to do that. And so thank you so much for listening and watching uh, today. We really appreciate that. And again, I appreciate Kevin for coming on the show. And so as I fire up, um, our uh, favorite uh, music, as some of you have uh, have made made evident. Okay, we're gonna fire it up right now, and uh, I'm super excited uh, for what's to come. We have a lot in the hopper. I mean, there is some great shows coming. So, for Kevin, for John, I'm Wes, and we are the Dental Guys. Thank you.